It's the Bass Sessions, and we've travelled down to central London to spend some time in some very exclusive surroundings in the headquarters of the Grand Order of the Water Rats. And I've got the pleasure of talking to 2014's King Rat, Rick Wakeman. Thank you very much. You don't have to bow and scrape. Uh, that's quite right. Um, I, I would happily do so to be in such amazing surroundings where we've got such history all around us here. It's amazing. It's the, it's the oldest entertainment order in existence. It's 125 years old this year. Members have included the likes of uh, Lauren Hardy, Bud Flanagan, uh, Charlie Chaplin. And in the museum here, we've got all sorts of things. Tommy Cooper's fezzes over there. So we've got all of Danny LaRue's costumes floating around in different places. Charlie Chaplin's cane which is uh, a bit special for me as well because when I lived in Switzerland he was my next door neighbour. So it's, just, it's nice to see some of him here as well. It's an amazing place, just an amazing place. And um, it's, it's a big year for you in many ways, not least of which perhaps, and I know you're very proud of this, that you are, you are th literally King Rat this year. What just yeah. briefly does that involve, Rick? Well, you're elected by your fellow rats. There's only ever been 881 rats in total since uh, 1889 in, it, in its history. Because you can't ask to join, you have to be invited to join. And there's various offices you can take within the lodge. It's a huge charity, that's what basically it is, an entertainment charity. But what you do, there are elections every year for the, for the various posts. And it's generally accepted that you do other positions, other offices, before you, know, you, you, you wish to stand for election. But if you want to stand for King Rat, then I think everybody who's, who's stood for King Rat over the years and been King Rat, uh, you want to try and make a, a bit of a difference and put your, put your stamp on. So um, I was very, very honoured uh, to get elected for, for this year. And I'm... I'm, I'm pretty certain that I will manage to, to bring them down to the depths of what people associate me with. No, actually, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I've got a great team. It's a team. It's not just the King. It's a huge team of wonderful people. And um, well, when you're not concentrating on that, you've got a lot of other things going on as well, which we, which yeah. we must cover, um, if you like, to do with the day job. Yes, and, uh, and the and, evening job. And the evening job, of course. Um, so, some, some big... Some big stuff happening on the, on the live front with a, with, a, with a big tour coming up, which you're preparing for at the moment. Yeah, the Jones Centre of the Earth tour, very brief history. We, last time it was done in England, in fact, it was only ever done three times in, in, in England, twice on one night at the Royal Festival Hall in 1974, and the same year at Crystal Palace, at, a, at, a, at what they called the Garden Party, the out, an outdoor, uh, outdoor event. Uh, we then toured it round the world, Journey, and then, cut a long story short, all the music went missing. And in fact, it's still missing to this day. Uh, however, a strange thing happened that the conductor's score turned up about five years ago in terrible condition. And a musicologist friend of mine, Guy Prothero, managed to restore it. It took six months. And after it was done, he said, well, now we've got it. You can play it again if you like. I said, yeah. And he said, no, I remember when we first did it, because he was in the choir at the time. He said it was only 36 minutes long for the simple reason that's all you could fit on a record. No, and it was meant to be longer. I said, yeah, it was meant to be 55, 56 minutes long. So there's a lot of music that was never ever recorded, never ever done. And he said, and there were a few mistakes at the live recording. I said, yeah, more than a few, mainly from one of the keyboard players, but, you know, apart from that. And he said, well, what a great opportunity, now you've got that. Have you still got the missing music? I said, yeah. He said, why don't we go into the studio, redo it again, exactly as it should be with all the missing, missing parts, which is exactly what we've done. Uh, and that comes out in April. Uh, and... Then I just got, because you've got to tour this. So we put seven shows up for sale, which, which pretty much sold out incredibly quickly. So we shoved another seven on uh, to sell. Uh, but I'm a great believer in if it's live, it's live. And if it's recorded with the symphony orchestra and choir, then you tour with the symphony orchestra and choir. So I'm taking around with me the Iran symphony orchestra, who are just fantastic. They played on the album. Uh, the English chamber choir, uh, my full band, two singers, um, got a great actor um, narrating, um, uh, which is Philip Franks, who's a great actor. He's doing it. So we've got a great team. I mean, there's hundreds of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, a, a quite a quite an experience for, for for people to come and see it again. And yep. A lot of a lot of anniversaries this year being celebrated. Yeah, it's it's, well. it's unbelievable. Really, it's it's forty years, of course, since the first and only concerts in the UK because they were in nineteen seventy four. Nothing since. It's exactly one hundred and fifty years uh, when George Vaughan when he wrote the book. So that's one hundred and fifty years. I also, uh, just a few days after the end of the tour, become a pensioner, 
which actually my manager was a little bit upset about, Brian, because he said if we could have moved the tour a little bit later, I could have done the entire tour on a bus pass. And, <laughs> and that yeah. would have saved him an awful lot of money. <laughs> I recorded the Out There album um, back, you know, well, 10, 12 years ago or so, and it, it was an album inspired by a great friend of mine called Scott Vangen at, at NASA. He's the chief paymaster. He decides what goes up in space and what doesn't, and who goes up and what doesn't. And through him, over the years, for the last 15 or so years, I've met loads of astronauts. I've been very honoured of speaking to people who've been on the, the space station, people who've walked on the moon. Uh, I've spent so much time with them all. And one of my most enjoyable dinners about 12 years ago was uh, he came along to a show and said, I've got some people you're going to have dinner with tonight. I saw that. And it was six women who all looked like they'd come out of Dallas. Uh, I, mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean the, the city of Dallas, I mean the TV <laughs> programme of Dallas or Dynasty. And they were lovingly known as the Astro Babes, and they were all uh, women who'd been up in space and, and been around. Uh, absolutely fantastic fun, I mean, talking to them. It was just, it was just brilliant. Um, and so the experiences I've had talking to them inspired the Out There album, which was the, basically the origin and, uh, of music. Uh, the, Sadness was when I finished the album. It was at the time of the uh, tragedy of the of the Challenger, and I knew three of the crew, and I was really, it was I was really gutted, genuinely gutted about the whole thing. And so, uh, with permission from NASA, I dedicated the the album to them. Um, but one of the things that, that concerned me at the time, we did release it, but in a very very small way, because I had a bit of a problem in as much as uh, various sort of press agencies and things came on and said, oh, this is a great selling point, you can talk about, and I said, I can't do that. You didn't I want can, to exploit that I can, There is absolutely no way that I'm going to, you know, to, to do that. So basically I decided, and with the blessing of my band, who are all on it and all good, good friends of mine, we said, that we would just, just pull it back. And we pulled, basically pulled it out. And we said, we will wait until there's, I suppose, a, a, a a decent period of time where it wouldn't be in the nicest sense newsworthy again people would jump on the back of it and then we would put it out and uh, esoteric records at cherry that, that's exactly what they're, they're doing they're, they're putting it all out we've redone the cover uh, once again though I checked with with NASA and, and Scott and I said I would still like to put a picture of the crew in and a dedication to the crew if that's okay and he said absolutely and all their families are happy about that so we've done that, and uh, and the nice thing is, it's it's now a good decent period of time. So nobody can ever accuse anybody of trying to uh, tap in on an absolute tragedy, which of course we're not. Of course, and and also that, and um, we, we, we were talking earlier, and, and 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 this is very interesting. I think that journey to the centre of the earth, uh, it, it's it's already been literally out there in space. Yeah, uh, out there's been out in space. Uh, they've taken that up on a couple of missions. Uh, I've got all the wonderful authentication from the White House and NASA on all of that. Uh, there's a wonderful picture of out there on one of the missions where they actually got the CD and let it float in, you know, in, inside in the, the zero gravity. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, and there was another album as well, 2000 AD Into the Future. That went up in 2001. Uh, I'll show you how long ago. So that went up as cassette because that was all they could play it up there <laughs> and blasted that out. Uh, Journey to the Centre of the Earth was played during 17 orbits of the Earth while they were mapping the Earth, which I believe a lot of that which was, is used for our sat -navs today, they did that. And they're great, they've given me all the authentication for everything for it. And I reckon that I'm the reason why we haven't had any alien actual landings here, because as they've got close and heard the music, they've gone, nah, they've just <laughs> gone somewhere else. Take off to somewhere else. But in, in the meantime, for, uh, for Earthbound fans of yours, Rick, <laughs> Uh, they can they can come and come and see you live uh, later on in the year. Yep. Um, perhaps uh, if, if if you would just uh, give us a little bit of information about the tour, where it's going, the dates, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, trying to remember off the top of my head where we're going. We start in Newcastle on April the twenty fourth, and we've got Manchester, uh, Cardiff. There's two at the Royal Albert Hall, uh, Birmingham NIA, uh, Bournemouth Entertainment Centre, Plymouth Pavilions. Uh, this is this is like. Um, the generation game where the thing's going by, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to remember where on earth Probably I'm playing. Toy. Uh, yeah, Landagno, uh, Liverpool, uh, Nottingham, and I've 
probably missed somewhere out, but there's there's 14 in all. Uh, but, but all the information's on your website? All the information's mm -hmm. on uh, rwcc.com. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great stuff. Um, Rick, it's an absolute pleasure and, and to, to talk to you as always, but in such fantastic surroundings. I'm so in love with this place and this room. I'm very, every member of the Water Rats is a very proud member. Uh, this is the, the history of the entertainment industry. Uh, as I say to, a, I've said to my sons and a lot of people, you know, the truth of the matter is, if it, if it wasn't for how the entertainment industry started with all these people, and it ironically all started in pubs, that's where everything started. As all uh, good things do. They do indeed. In, uh, uh, then it, it, we wouldn't be here now, bands wouldn't be playing on stage. None of the, none of the entertainment as we know it today would happen. It's evolved all from the history, uh, most of which is logged in, in this wonderful, wonderful order. Fantastic. Thank you very much for talking to me, Rick. That's most kind. And, Thank you. Uh, that was Martin Smith with Rick Wakeman at the Grand Order of the Water Rats here in central London for the base sessions.